Sweet. Smells like science. But I did manage to collect a lot of oil-stained specimens and, and sea life that was, gulf life that was impacted. And I met a lot of great people, which is one of the reasons I moved down here. Um, and so by 2012, the media had kind of forgotten about the oil spill, but my friends down here were still sending me specimens with you know, oil shrimp and talking about the loss of wildlife. And so working with three biologists, we, we came up with this. So it's a tiny little fragment of the amount of life that's in the Gulf of Mexico. It's like less than 3%. So if we had another like 97 of these in a room, that's the <laughs> current guesstimate of how much life is actually in the Gulf. Uh, Vertebrates. 97 more. No, no, everybody. Period. Everybody. I mean, the number is changing all the time. Sure. So this was the number as of 10 years ago. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> so it's now probably like one person. Who knows? Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of it's supposed to be a monument, but it's also reflecting a trophic pyramid, like a food chain. And so I tried to make the connections with different species, and the empty jars are representing like links of the food chain that potentially were impacted. Um, at this point, we guessed that there would be missing fish. And that's kind of how my science research ended up going in that direction. But it's funny that the art inspired the science. Um, but we wanted to talk about it. And this is cool because as a scientist, we couldn't say that. But as, as an art project, we could speculate about the impact from the oil spill. So this was shown in New York City in 2012. And it got a lot of attention. It got attention in the New York Times. And they wrote about the oil spill. And Senator Bill Nelson from Florida booked an appointment and came to New York to see it, and he let us know, so we, I, I, could, I arranged a 300-page dossier of recent research for his team, and so he was one of the big senators that went on to, to battle BP for um, funding for, you know, to clean up. So the oil spill was awful, 200, over 200 million gallons of oil, half of which remains in the Gulf of Mexico, and we're still trying to understand that impact. But it's also the largest ever environmental liability case in the world. So as a response to losing all that money, I do think that the, the oil and gas industry got a lot safer, at least for a while. I don't know anymore um, if it's gone backwards again. But from friends that work offshore, they, they make comments about how they felt safer being at work. Like there's increased like safety regulations after? Yeah. Yep. And you know, just making sure people aren't working as long and they're not pushing for like one of the reasons why deep water happened is they were really pushing from up top to try to get this this oil out and doing so dangerously. And so, so and people were like stressed out and stuff and, yeah. and made mistakes. Yeah. So a recent, this was shown a year ago or a year and a half ago in Lafayette, Louisiana, and um, which is just west. And some of the some of the folks that came to see the show were oil and gas workers that knew people that died on that rig. So it was really nice to see that they weren't offended by this, that they actually appreciated the the gesture. Um, and I don't know if you saw it today, but in the field. There were, um, there's an oil and gas company that had 21 oil barrels and they're collecting that amount of oil every day from a current oil leak that's going on called the Taylor Energy Spill. So, and it's been going on since 2004 and there's no, there's no um, future plan to ever stop it until it just runs dry. So, but at least they're collecting it now. Um, 
So when we're going to move those oil barrels over there tomorrow. <laughs> and what do you call your piece? What, what's the title of this piece? It's called Collapse. And there's an appendix that goes with it. And I'm going to work out here. So if you've got a question about any of the species. Oh, um, cool. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, a, that's a honking appendix, dude. That's cool. Yeah. So there's a map because you can't possibly see everything. But yeah, this is kind of, cool. you get, you can get a, get, get a sense of where you're at, 155, and then you can orient yourself that oh, wow, way. Cool. And then there's, there's the species, and then here is the science that kind of backed up what, what we're thinking. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So. Did you collect the oil pops? I did, yeah. Yeah, and then those were used in a court case. Um, those were collected here in Plaquemines Parish and Barataria Bay in 2012. So those were, um, yeah, interesting. And then these showed up at a market in New Orleans in 2012 with lesions and deformities. And, a sh you know, a shrimp were like, saw and was like, dude, you need these for your collection. So they shipped into the gallery. And then on the other side, there's a shrimper in Alabama who signed a, a confidentiality agreement, um, but he sent, sent oil stained shrimp anyway. He didn't, you know, he's like, just list me as anonymous. <laughs> but I like that people <laughs> felt comfortable and needed a way to share their story, you know, so that was an important part. Of and so all these samples are post spill collection? Some are deering, some are like right at, and then some are post. Okay, cool. Oh, so I was talking to But you. all between, 2010 and 2010, 2012, whatever. Yeah, early 2012. I, cool. I was talking to Shannon about the the soft shell turtle. Yeah, the Asian and also soft the, shell. The Burmese python. Yeah. So, 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 why did you feel like those belonged in this? Well, they're here. They're naturalized. So I didn't want it to. I but I also wanted to include things like the placostomus. Uh -huh. um, which to talk, I mean, because it's about the oil spill, but it's also about overfishing and invasive species. There's a lion fish in here too. Um, but yeah, all those guys, I mean, the Everglades are chuck full of pythons. So I didn't want it to only be about the native fish mm -hmm. um, or the native species, but just kind of what's actually here. Yeah. And so this is reflecting the whole Gulf, not just Louisiana. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. And awesome. know, again, it's just like a tiny little collection. <laughs> no, but that's very cool, dude. Very, very cool. But my students and I, I, I worked on it with four undergrads, and it took us like six months to count and fix oh my everything. God. Oh my but God. We counted tw over 26,000 individual specimens. Now, it's because some of the jars have like, you know, 3,000 to 200 <laughs> little sea snails, but that's we cool. did try to make it as, like, you know, kind of science as possible. That's awesome, dude. That's super <laughs> awesome.